Fab. How long have you been running the show now, Mark? I was I was appointed April two thousand seven. Yeah. Mm. So it's this is it was, your. It was a bit of a, a handover period from about August prior. Year, so you had your my, first full year of results, and this is into your second year now. So these are very much your numbers, that's and correct. very strong numbers coming out of Group Five today. It does look like, on the face of it, anyway, that it is a sector that might just be able to shake off the global um, the gloominess. I think yes. I think. Um, obviously, you know, the immediate uh, cycle we're in ignores possibly the, the sort of long lead times uh, which, which our sector has in terms of the lengths of projects. These are multi-year, um, you know, long lead time sort of projects. So it does take a while to come through and obviously then to uh, go through on a tail. But I think certainly our line of sight of new projects, which, which we alluded to in, in our presentation today, indicates certainly that life does not end in 2010. And mm -hmm. I think that's the important message. Dubai is an area where you are fairly exposed. It was interesting talking in Davos with the people from the Middle East. Their view was that there are major infrastructure programs that are going on from the governments in Dubai, but there's been quite a lot of froth from the private sector. Well, the froth from the private sector is now gone, but the government infrastructure continues. Are you seeing that it's that way? Uh, I think Dubai possibly is the exception there. Um, you know, we weren't involved with the private property sector in, in the Middle East at all, but uh, we were certainly involved in the government's infrastructure stand. And, um, you know, what's happened, obviously, to ourselves is that once, once the, as you say, the froth had got through the property market in, in, in the Middle East and Dubai, then it, it, it left, really, the, the Dubai government with an issue in terms, in terms of their ability to, to fund uh, their capital program. So... At quite short notice, they've had to you know, review that and really cut back on a lot of expenditure. So there's a lot of contracts, which are government contracts in Dubai, which have been cancelled, and particularly around sure, the Jebel Ali Airport, which is that uh, new trade port. You know, those have all been, been canned. But um, the effect on Group 5 was obviously a substantial um, uh, withdrawal of our order book. We, what we've got left there now is about 15% you know, of what we had. But uh, one five but, uh, of what you had. We we lost about eighty percent of our order book, um, you know, basically overnight. That said, of course, um, you know, one contract is actually on a, a suspension as opposed to having been cancelled, and the other one was terminated. But you know, for us, it's the same thing. We have to obviously uh, pull down our resources and obviously get to a, a reasonable size such that we can continue with the existing work on a profitable basis and then to rebuild. I mean, so that's not, what we've done. It's not just the froth of the private sector then, it's also the public sector in Dubai at least. In Dubai at other least. Other parts of Middle East? Well, I think that's where the differentiator comes in is that you've got hard currency earnings in terms of oil and gas revenues and industrializing economies around there, which uh, was always the attraction of being in that region as well. And, you know, a little while back, what, a year back, we did diversify and we moved into Abu Dhabi. We're operating in Jordan. So I think uh, certainly we're there to stay, but Dubai may not be a buoyant market for us for a while, but certainly, you know, our experience in the Middle East, we're active in Abu Dhabi. We're in on the ground in Jordan. Uh, there's other economies there which are going to spend money, and, and we're you know, certainly not going to be withdrawing from that market. You did manage to replace most of what you lost in Dubai in the South African market. Yeah. Um, obviously, those didn't happen overnight either. There was quite a lot in the pipeline, just uh, fortuitously that, you know, we'd position ourselves for that infrastructure spend. So, you know, you make your own luck. But um, certainly we were able to, you know, substantially replace it anyway in, in quite a short period of time with government infrastructure work. There was also in, in that mix of, of the new work, one, there was private sector work too, but uh, substantially it's due to our positioning uh, in the public sector that uh, we were able to largely replace what we lost in Dubai. And South Africa is not cancelling any infrastructure programs? We haven't had any infrastructure uh, cancellations notified to us at all. I think there are obviously you know, some budget uh, rearrangements, if you like, as to where we're going to spend the money, but certainly the national projects which we engage in are well managed and, and you know, we, we're getting paid on time. It's, uh, it's, it's a very professional environment. Um, where we have seen some cancellations is, you know, one or two of the smaller mining projects in the African region, but certainly nothing at home. Mm. You're also exposed to Eastern Europe. I ask this because there's a growing concern about a debt explosion in Eastern Europe, which would make the subprime or be on a similar scale to what's happening in the subprime area. Are you seeing any impact yet? I think we need to, to look at where Group 5 is involved in Eastern Europe. It's a very specific market. We're, we're in 
uh, infrastructure concessions there, which is really at the moment around around uh, the tolling of highways. Now, those ex sort of Balkan states lie between the east and west and are a natural corridor, you know, for traffic be between the, the east and the west. And so, as, as a national priority sort of projects, it's a form of revenue for those countries too to actually have highways which are tolled. So that's what's driving these projects still. So that particular aspect is still quite buoyant, but the larger economies in Eastern Europe are, have also been through stress. Mm. So you're okay there, no matter what happens. Here at home, though, the one area where you have been taking strain is on your property developments. You've moved out of it, but not quickly enough. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say we'd moved out. What we've done is, is, is to decide to, to really cycle out of sort of lower-level types of infrastructure, you know, you know, retirement villages and golf estates and all those good things, and really... Um, leverage Group Fire's position as a construction company and obviously um, move into, into the much larger projects, the city centre CBD, uh, obviously the waterfall development north of Johannesburg is, is a 25 billion rand a potential you know, project environment over 12 years. So it's, it's to cycle out of the sort of lower level, uh, less, less valued uh, portfolio in favour of a new portfolio. Obviously the, the property market has, uh, hasn't played ball with us, so we, we've slowed down that side of it. But we have made just some good investments in, in long-term annuity opportunities, which uh, was alluded to in our presentation today. David Shapiro was explaining earlier on how your share price has fallen, has halved in the last few months. Um, it's now sitting on a, um, well, a, a fairly attractive price-to-earnings ratio of six times. If you translate that, that's around about 15% earnings yield, almost as much, uh, David, as you can get in those Steinhoff Stein part for FSA. <laughs> and a dividend yield of only 4%, though. And that's because you, you don't pay much of your earnings out by way of dividend, only one quarter of what you earn. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think the construction sector also historically has been around the four times, and uh, we've stuck to that. Uh, you know, if, if we were to change that, I think we need to go back to, back to shareholders. But um, in, in, in these times, also, one, you know, wanting to obviously invest in, in the growth of the business as we have, go the, re the restructuring of Group 5, it's, it's, it's a new strategy. So I think four times is, is appropriate at the moment for us. So you seem to have a good portfolio, well-balanced geographically in certain areas as well. You are looking in the second six months of the year to, in fact, um, retain this kind of growth rate that you – well, to retain a growth rate so that you'll be positive for the year as a whole. Now, aren't too many other companies that are as confident as that? Why are you? Well, I think it goes back to the cycle. You know, it's long-term business. Uh, you know, these projects that, that we're in are, are sort of multi-year projects, so it doesn't turn as quickly. But uh, So it's important for us to also have that line of sight because they're big lumps of contracts. But certainly in the second half, a lot of what we've just begun in the first half is still going to be trading in the second half and into 2.10. What about other parts of the world, Mark? We hear about big infrastructure programs being launched, for instance, in Western Europe, in uh, the U.S., in perhaps even in Asia? We've, we've looked really at, uh, obviously, uh, in terms of our, our sort of geographic location, sort of north-south play. We haven't gone east-west. We have been invited to go to Australia a number of times. So I don't think it's a good time to go now. Uh, but I think there are some aspects of what we do we can probably do anywhere. You know, that's the uh, small power plants, mining construction, and so on. And it may well be that that, that there's opportunities on a, a very uh, sort of um, carefully selected basis with known partners that we might do that. But obviously, you know, at the moment we have enough on our plate to keep us busy, certainly for this calendar year. Well, Mr. Tabira, a good long-term possibility, but unfortunately we're in a bear market. Otherwise, you'd be jumping out and buying the shares tomorrow. No, I think you're right, I, I, except that there's going to be a point where your downside is protected, and I think we're pretty close to that.